Okay, so on behalf of the panel, first, thank you for having us here. Uh, I know this is the uh, first panel of the day, so it's the honorable responsibility to be very engaged. Quickly jumping to the topic, content, uh, content marketing. Uh, we met a little while ago, and uh, a large part of our conversation started today. Uh, content is what we do every day. It's consumers. Uh, each one of us is consuming copious amounts of content in our lives, family lives, the world, and brands. And uh, flip it over to where the brands is like the customer, it's us, and uh, a large part of the brands I is now spent in creating, managing, and uh, disassembling content. Uh, that's the way we gave it a very important for them. And in the age of the internet, uh, the possibilities and the, and the ways in which the internet can be created are so many that it's very few excuses in the moment for education and education and the age. In that time, uh, we'll start with the idea and we'll start with the idea of what is content marketing and 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 the idea of what is Really now fast. Sure, so I think today you have a good discussion about it was you have so much content in browse. And when we look at content, I think content is a common thing. It's how to do a campaign and it's a whole part of any brand strategy today. We've been creating content for uh, a lot of time, but I think what's happened and what's changed in today's world is that uh, you know, and then now has a decision. So you know if you're there out there on the net, it's there forever. So I think there's a little more responsibility towards the content you create. Um, the question of discoverability, of saying you know you used to create a lot of content as a brand, but then you have to spend an equal amount of more money in disseminating that content, but today you have the options of discoverability. So content becomes more. So uh, I think what's important is that content is actually the core of brand strategy. It's it's not a specific particular function, so I think it's actually the largest responsibility of the CIA today. Because when you talk about the brand purpose as a brand voice, that's actually uh, you know, signed off from you know, whatever content is out there on you. That's what I think, uh, you know, that's the role of content in that sense. Pradeep, the content market is on you. All our lives we are content marketing, even when we are doing it, 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 we are doing it. So what's the thing? So I think the way of brand solution providers is. So I think 1995 was when the first time I actually went to the brand marketing. And this was the time of the National Leadership Survey, which was the Technology Decision of the Union Leadership Survey of the Union. And one of the newspaper brands did really well, but that was not reflected in the way they attracted advertising from clients. So we provided a solution in content marketing, a large format should be advertising, or not, sorry, content, which basically analyzed the national leadership survey finding for the brand, how it was, and so on and so forth. Few weeks later, the client called us very happy because the ROI was very high, and ROI was what? Some people called him. Some of his sales force was happy, some agency guys had good thing and like was happy. Fast forward to 2018, a supplement, a nutritional brand or a supplement brand, he wants to aid children and there is a lot of things this is about natural products, right? So, and there is a lot of nature, superfoods and all that and they want to associate and that's what they really ask us for the We provide a three month, you know, which is a three month activity. In all articles, there is a video, there is a video, there is a social media, there is a social media, now this content is actually the dimension has changed. It is no longer a unique dimension, newspaper, content kind of format. So there is a so many formats suddenly come into it. But it doesn't, after that, but the client is also very smart. Because he says that, okay, we can have the first one, let's not talk about your brand, any topic in fact. So in first month, we read all of articles, we talk about that, what is all these various things available in the nature, and so on and so forth. One month down the line, the brand is introduced, right? 
But before we even know this activity, we started with the ROI is established in terms of the given deliver of 2 million users who will minimum spend 2 minutes on the content, seeing the content. 80% of them are women. Okay. So if you see this, these dimensions were dramatically changed and the another part is storytelling. So like in, in the, in the, in the, in the in 1995 world, you know, you just communicate. Now we are interacting. Even though an expert writes the law, they have to answer to the people. There are many stories, mothers are sharing the stories. So there is a lot of story element with big cinema. So the content marketing in my opinion has evolved a lot from a one unidimensional, lot of fairy tales saying that okay, we all believe this will work, let's see one page at the business paper and so on and so forth. So now actually deliver the measurable delivers, delivers, and if you don't deliver, then the penalty for the day. So this is I think a, a lot of thing has seen in the last two decades. This is what my opinion. I'm just going to stick with measurement for one minute. Uh, I'm going to ask a couple of you about measurement because, uh, because that's, that's a large part of the thing. We tend to think it could be as, as soft, as creativity. But uh, there's, there's two other pieces to it. One is the science, and the other is the measurement. Uh, I'm going to start with measurement and uh, then, then we'll talk about a little more about the science and the creativity and science of the need. Nika, you come from a category which is hard nose numbers. Like, I know what those numbers look like every day. Uh, and yet, the brand relies uh, more and more and more to uh, How do you marry measurement uh, with creativity of content marketing? And is it even measurable? First, I want to know because if you look at the category, uh, yes, we are looking at Financial services is a category where the measurement and number of But if you look at the way any brand would be built today, uh, there will be two aspects. So there's of course the storytelling aspect of it, which is really great. But when you look at the science and you look at the measurement, uh, when you define your consumer personas, and that's traditional marketing science, it's nothing new, right? When you define your consumer personas and you say that this is a guy I am interested in, and then you create engagement for him. Yes, it's measurable and measurable to go across the customer journeys. There's a large part around attracting new customers. And then you're attracting customers to a category like insurance, but there's so much distrust. There's a large part around measurement, but there's also a large part around storytelling. And when we talk about the content ecosystem, we need a lot of... Uh, uh, the question is, good content? Scale up content? How much content can you play with? Because you talk about personalization, and then you can generate our needs, so when you say, Talk about the I'm going to talk about the most different thing, and maybe my content resonates because I'm creating a right persona, but that's also expensive. Right? So I think there is measurement to be made because right from the journey, when you say that you're under to attract, how do you really create content that is, you know, uh, from an ROI perspective, it stacks up? So we use a lot of things, we use a lot of ecosystem and partnerships and collaboration. See, unlike you know, some of you, you know, the content comes as well. We do it as a brand. So you know, we collaborate with the right set of people. Of course, you know, um, having the right checks and balances and authenticity in mind. But I think collaboration and creating an ecosystem for getting the right content for your consumers is a big driver for us as businesses that they want ROI or acquisition led uh, content. But when you look at our customers, we sell a promise as insurance. So when we sell a promise to customers as insurance, there's a customer who's paying you for 10 years and probably not getting anything back. So for us, it's not just customer judgment, how do we really engage with this guy for 10 years? And how do we make sure that you create value and the conversation and the benefit to the brand is actually with the other way of the So yeah, why do you see more numbers driven in other way? You know, Arch, ye content data, so you know what's the cost for you, and how many things that you have to pay. But there's also the long game, which is why we invest a lot in technology as well when we talk about content and content strategy of saying, you know, how do you measure? How do you make sure that your content is only channel and you're know, putting it in the right places? How do you make sure to deliver content to the right way? Give a back to my customer through various channels. What's the right one to deliver? What's the right one for me? So we deploy all those tools when we talk about our content strategy and pieces so that we get some other way out of it. So otherwise, it's just not possible for me. So I, I have two questions coming out there. Uh, Omni channel is what I'm going to pick one, but uh, but good points on uh, tracking customer journeys and the use of technology. 
Katika there is the online world, there is the online world, there is so much on the online world. There are different audiences, different needs, and different mindsets so that we uh, and all of them will be customers. Uh, how much can it in something today? How do you manage the, the complexity of omni channel in a world where uh, Anika says the world was generation twice? Everybody is expecting to get what they want, the content that they want, what they want. So first of all, good evening everyone. Uh, I hope all of you are marketeers, otherwise this would be a very boring session for you. <laughs> but, uh, so I work with a company called Kama Ayurveda and uh, in a unique position I look after sales and marketing. So in fact, when we were discussing before this session, we said, let's put in a little bit about omni-channel over here. And to the question asked, Content is not omni-channel, customer is. It's the customer that is going across the channels and participating in your brand and not your content. We are just tailor-making the content to the channel where the customer is participating. And for a company like ours, which is a luxury brand, we have adopted certain channels and bucketed them as per our targets or KPIs. So there are two or three buckets that drive our sales and there are two or three buckets that drive our brand and our engagement. So for example, Facebook is used for engagement, conversions, Instagram is used for content, storytelling, brand messaging. Then in-store is used for direct customer interaction, engagement and again product sales. And that's really how we have adopted the omni-channel into content and content into omni-channel strategy. It's not easy, and I'll give you a small example. Uh, we have products that are Ayurvedic, authentic, and some of them appeal to people as young as like 16, 17 year olds who have acne on their skin. Some of the products appeal to somebody who wants to maintain their skin, you know, maybe 35, 40 years old, and aging. Now imagine you have that one Instagram and on top of that you have a sales target for the money. On top of that you have a holy festival. On top of that you have elections. Then you have summer weather. Then you have the need of the brand to start telling the story about a new product that they're going to launch. And that's when a marketer suddenly figures out that I'm on each channel. I have lots of content to put out. I have lots of customer audiences to talk to. What do I choose? In a nutshell, decide which content bucket is giving you what return for which customer segment and go with that. So if your stores are going to give you the sales, which they are, online or offline stores, they will make the content for that. If your Instagram is about storytelling and about building the brand experience, go with that. To your last question, then you don't expect an ROI like that. Right? Then you just expect customer engagement. And maybe uh, at some point in time you might have a conversion, but that doesn't become the case yet. So I guess in today's world I just sum it up. Uh, omni-channel is something we all talk about, but we all are on. We ourselves are customers. We are omni-channel ourselves. So just tailor me your content to your customer audience and where they are participating. I'm going to take a crack back from what you said. Everything's not about learning uh, yes, and yes, yes, yes. Moksh, is there a, uh, is there, is there a bunch of metrics that you involved that measures engagement, uh, cash ROI, uh, depending on where you are, who you are talking to, have you been able to evolve metric or metric money? Now, actually, uh, because I think on that, I think, uh, see, I think there are three streams of content that you create as a brand. Um, I would say, A, first stream of content is the brand as a publisher. That's one whole stream of content that comes up. The second stream would be the, the experts as publishers of content. So, experts, bloggers, critics, 
viewers and their ancestral content for the planet. The third stream, I would say, would be consumers as publishers and content creators. So, for, from our perspective, there are three brackets of content that come out from a uh, brand perspective. And I think from a learning curve, each of them work with different kind of objectives, and each of them have a different measurement metric. Let me start with, say, a brand as a publisher, right? So, the most expected thing from us is to share information about the new products we've launched and the offers that have come out, and we advertise it. I wouldn't count that as common. That doesn't count as a brand as a publisher. I think, basically, to me, content is where consumers are actively seeking your own, engaging with your activity, and that will be qualified as content marketing. So, if I think advertising now, what kind of content does a brand like us come up with? So, I'll give you an example. Uh, Some time ago, we launched a product called, uh, you know, it's a, it's a meal box that we launched. The pre launch component of the meal box was basically an omni channel multiplayer game that we created. And it was kind of launched five days before the launch, uh, the game itself. And we got many, like, lakhs of consumers to come on and try and crack the code to unlock this thing called a mystery box. So when we had five days of engagement with consumers, I would consider that to be an example of content marketing, where people came on the uh, on the website, they interacted with the game, tried to track a code, win something, and interestingly, when they won, they got a paid access to come to the restaurant and access that box one day before this launch. And our measure for that kind of, kind of content was how many people actually turned up, and we found that almost, you know, uh, I mean, kind of actually share a number of about four percent of our sales that we got met on that one single day before the launch. Because what we were doing is rather than having a pre-launch teaser campaign or having a coming soon campaign or just an advertisement, we created this game where people had to unlock the mystery box. And that gave us revenue that we actually measure even before the product got launched. So in this example, we actually could define sales itself to measure how this content marketing has, has worked. But there will be other change of content where everything is about launching new products or offers. So there are often disruptive things to do. Like right? so for example, uh, you know, uh, last year we launched something called a KFO, which is a chemically flying object. It basically means we got the people to deliver a box at home that kind of really could be reassembled into a drone. And it also of course has food in it when the box was delivered. Now, with this kind of content, I think what happens is the news itself is highly disruptive. What a product like cheese does, for example. News is highly disruptive. We don't really have to create content. What we do is we give out the information, the key. Uh, you know, setting points of the attributes of the process that are interesting. And then it has to be handed over and let it lose the native uh, content creators, the platform, the schools of, uh, you know, or other, other examples that we had used last time. So, I would say that when we, when we use content marketing and our back platforms to create even bloggers, for example, we have to let go of the side of content that is created. All we have to tell them is, hey, that is something really bad and interesting coming from a brand perspective. Are you interested? And what we find is our metric there reflects whether something has actually become successful or not. It's actually earned media. And we're able to actually track earned media and determine. We find that when things are actually fundamentally interesting for the consumer beyond advertising, earned media kind of flies to the roof. We don't really have to spend much money on it. Everyone's interested, people are sharing it. And we really find ROI actually there becomes, it's only really exponential. So the measurement of ROI is irrelevant. Uh, so that's the other interesting thing. What we also can do uh, on the second series of initiatives is that we find that when we do some of these disruptive initiatives like a KFO or a Chica launch and all the impressions go up, we also see that for that particular quarter, you find an increase in, for example, the impressions of top of mind. And we also found that correlation between top of mind revenue, top of mind and sales revenue itself. So it's a derived metric. But you can actually draw correlations very comfortably from any of the content marketing streams you do, which are taking us to have an impact on earning media. You can see whether it's made a mark or not. You can do that to record some of this initial back to on a post brand track. But you must measure that because everything must be the right perception of behavior. If it doesn't matter what you do, then it's actually a failure initiative. So some one of the two has to be tracked for everything. The third one that I will talk about is consumer as publishers. You know, for example, uh, you know, that's really great fun because you give consumers something to work with, you like a template, like we, we see where consumers say, how many different ways can you say say when you can And they come up with back and cool content in order of how they can say it, and we give them a template to work out of. And what we find is engagement creates a good template to work on these kind of dynamics. 
So we find that the difference is a lot of when everybody five percent happen on these kind of things. And then as we say the people who post on our phone, that they want hundred percent. So here you can certainly check your access and your engagement rate. And that itself is a good check of otherwise because you have nothing to really sell it. All you're doing is getting your consumers are not to buy your brand, but buy into your brand. And if you can check your engagement rate, that's how it works. So otherwise, how can you do this? If you can make a very interesting thing, one of the examples I love is this land tech, right? Very boring industrial tech. You go to this place, you could create any land power. So when the first iPad comes, he has one simple line, can it land it? And then he puts that entire iPad into this land and he just converts it to a trust and generates 18 million views on one video. Now, if you look at the ROI of this kind of a thing, let's say that you are person of buying one video, you want to look at one rupee. So tell me, for the 160,000 rupees worth of iPad, his return is 18 million rupees already happened just from this, and the sales are all additional. So an interesting content can actually create a way more ROI, but emotion is something that it starts and rational gets delivered. So this is a link between emotion and rational, you know, rational thing. is something which is some is a very large challenge in the market and in business. So we don't always really have a good idea. It is a good idea, but you know, there are so many successful case studies of user-generated content in the media. Legos created a whole franchise out of people creating But that thing would always have a guy that there's a lot of assistance which is in your head. And people create a lot of access to it. And there is the flip side. World media, which is the raw type of the media. What's the strategy to find that the This is the This is the pain, the antidote to that the pain. So, yes, you know, actually, in all categories today, as I said, the consumer is the publisher. So, you will have it across. And one comment, one comment piece can actually wipe off the entire. Or maybe that the brand has. So I think a couple of things. One, um, tracking the real time as much as you can across assets, um, responding real time to them. In our category specifically, I mean, we cannot change technology to do that, we use people to do that. And, uh, you know, because word of mouth is such a big deal, you also have a lot of microbates as well. But in a category like ours, they're difficult to find. So somewhere we also start a nurture course and actually get user content. Oh, I think we will support that now. So that helps. We've got uh, five minutes, so we are going to go to closing comments. Uh, why don't you start? Why don't you go backwards? Uh, closing comments, what is it that you would like to leave? Uh, everybody here with uh, one, one thing you would like to do. You would like to take out your skin, you would like to take it back. On the I think I would just say that we talk a lot about what we do as parents to manage content. Uh, just one thing that, you know, if you talk about purpose like marketing and you know as marketers that's in our brand strategy all the time, uh, content gives you a large play around that and if everything is linked to that one purpose and everything ties back together, then you know that's the real sort of impact on top of your funnel, otherwise it's just engagement, it's just cost per day. So I think that becomes very important and on a lighter note, I think Brands as publishers over the years will really go down. So I read somewhere a quote from uh, one of the guys that I like to manage this content marketing. He said that you know, content marketing is like a first day. If you talk too much about yourself, it doesn't make sense. So I guess we should also let, you know, just let it be sometimes and just, just be on the sidelines and Very quickly, uh, just one word, credentialing. Whatever content uh, we put out there and you we'll put out there, just make sure that it goes back to the brand's authenticity. And whatever the content is, if it comes back to the brand's authenticity and the brand umbrella, you credential your brand and your content will see a thousand words. And credit is not going to be used. Yeah, we'll be paid from credit. You don't have to be a I think whatever we are doing, content marketing is just a starting point. Unlike newspaper, television, radio, internet was never created as a mass media. It was a one-to-one media. 
and why Tamil Telangana language is getting seven million voters in India spending a long way of changing the power of this one-to-one -one communication? But that's the future. The future is that it's going to change dramatically. Whatever you are saying today is not going to remain. So we all need to prepare for it. And ultimate power of the media will be that one unique computer. Unique communication for each of the users, that is what a medium is capable to do. So I think uh, my view is that, you know, uh, advertising and content both have roles. Uh, consumers want information from brands as well, they just don't want to entertain that brand. In fact, they've got enough other folks that can entertain that and who perhaps are a bit better than what brands can do in terms of content and entertainment. So, you know, the thing is to be realistic about what you are doing is in the space of content and do it to, again, Tatekas uh, point in a relevant way. Don't, you know, don't go and have an opinion and everything under the sun because it's really not required. But it talks back to your brand story. So essentially, I would say content change to share food types, either talks about what you do as a brand and talks about it's done in a way which reflects how you say it, which is your brand story or brand personality. If both of those come alive through content, it's great to do. It's not working out for that, it's just let it go. So that's the idea. Be authentic, be relevant, this is technology, you don't be afraid to measure uh, and persistence. Those are the five things that I picked up from you guys. Summarizing uh, a time ago. So thank you very much. That was a very rich discussion. Lots of thanks. Thank you.